So my name's Hugh Thomas. I'm the co-CEO and co-founder of Ugly Drinks, which looks like this. Uh, Ugly is a fruit-infused, 100% natural sparkling water. We have two flavours currently, lemon and lime and grapefruit and pineapple. Uh, and the drink has been created as an alternative to traditional fizzy drinks that either have sugar or sweetener in. Uh, about three years ago, Joe, my co-founder, and I noticed uh, that the problems with obesity, diabetes, and just the pressure on the NHS and general happiness in the UK was something that had quite a lot of pressure on it. And we wanted to create a beverage that gave people a choice to choose something they didn't have sugar or sweetener in when they were in the shops. So Joe and I were inspired to create a drink without sugar and sweetener in. Um, after, firstly, after a trip to Japan where we noticed a lot of beverages that were similar to this, but also coming back to the UK and just looking at drink shelves and realising how many of those drinks had sugars and sweeteners in and how little choice there was if you wanted to avoid those two things. We also started looking into the problems we think these kind of trigger in some ways including things like obesity, diabetes, just pressure on the NHS and general that, that three o'clock slump a lot of people feel we thought was something that we could try and create something to avoid. Um, and what we've tried to create is a, is a drink in a can that still has a sense of fun, it still has that cold can moment, but it's at a price point that people can afford, it's not an expensive health drink, it is a recommended retail price of 99 pence and which we've infused the sparkling water with the essences and all of the fruit. We're just trying to give something people that is fizzy, fun, zero calorie, zero sugar, zero sweetener, and all natural, and that's the idea. Right now, there isn't any direct competition to our product in the UK, but we see uh, any sugary or sweetened beverage as potential competition for what we're trying to do. Um, the way we, I guess, sustain competition is by having a great tasting drink in a fun format, um, but also just through the way we operate as a business with the fun brand name, fun packaging, a great team, and just we try and execute in a way that is different to everybody else. We, we talk about being beautifully different as a, as a way of being ugly, and we try and look at everything we do like that, whether it's speaking to a manager of a store, talking to somebody in a shop when they're about to buy a drink, or talking to people on social media. We try and do things in a way that kind of Brings, people, brings it to life a little bit. Ultimately, we see this beverage as being for everybody, um, but right now we're trying to target those people who are maybe considering healthier switches. Uh, we see Ugly as a, as a switch you can make away from sugary or sweet and fizzy drinks that is easy, it still tastes great, it's hydrating, it's fresh. And so we're trying to find and target those people who are maybe picking up cans of fizzy drinks at lunchtime. Uh, they're probably working in offices, um, maybe in their 20s and 30s, and, and that's where, really we're, where we're really targeting our marketing, uh, as we don't have infinite marketing budgets right now. But ultimately, we think this drink's for everybody, and we think it's, I mean, it's suitable for everybody, all ages, um, children, animals, <laughs> everybody can drink it. So yeah, that's, that's what we're trying to do. We chose our initial retailers very much based on our target market. We're looking for a young urban audience for our product to begin with. Obviously, we still think it's for everybody, but there may be the, the consumer that's drinking fizzy drinks currently that might switch. And so we, we go from there and we try and find those shops that have that consumer visiting. Um, the way they have to look at it is when you think about customers that you want to sell your drink to, you really have to think about it from their point of view. Why should a shop stock your product? Is that consumer coming in? Does that consumer demand healthier options? We think our consumer wants healthier products. And so when we approach stores and retailers, that's, that's what we take to them. We're providing a new type of beverage that their consumer, the person that's shopping in their store is interested in, which ultimately leads to increased sales for their business. And so that's how we try and look at it. We obviously try and bring it to life as well when we approach the store. We have a fun brand, fun packaging, fun name. And so we're trying to sell in the brand as well. Um, but really that's how, that's how we're approaching it. Um, you have to think about it from their point of view as well as your own. So there is a whole supply chain behind the scenes that we've set up. So we obviously make the drinks uh, in our canning plant, uh, whether it, which is in the UK. We then ship those drinks to a warehouse just outside of London. And then from there, the drinks are shipped to the different wholesalers and retailers uh, across, uh, across London. Uh, there's no volume guarantees as such. Um, I think it's customer dependent. So 
Uh, we, we, we work depending on the conversations with each retailer. Um, but right now, uh, products available in a thousand shops in the UK and there's a whole system that gets the product onto those shelves, which is, goes on every day behind the scenes, which you might not imagine, but you have to get your head around. I can't go into too many specifics on pricing, as you'd imagine, but we try and work back from our price that we think consumers are going to want to buy this product at. So right now, the RRP on this can is 99 pence in the UK. We're trying to make something affordable that feels like something people can pick up when they're grabbing a drink on the go. Um, everything from there, you need to work back and you need to understand what your, your fixed costs are going to be, your, your product's uh, cost in terms of making it, and then you need to build a business that, that effectively works around that. Um, obviously, those things need to work. You can't have crazy operating expenses if, if you're not going to be able to sell enough drinks. You really need to get the right balance in order to grow your business, and, and that's what we're trying to do, and that's a learning process every day. So we don't have massive marketing budgets as a small business, so we have to use all the tools available to us to grow the brand. Um, social media has been a massive, massive tool that we've been able to use. It has very low uh, cost of entry, so we were able to set up social media accounts for no money at all. And so we've managed to build a, a good following on social media and communicate to our community there. Uh, we also spend a lot of time meeting consumers in person. So when we're sold in a shop, we try and meet consumers we're standing in store, giving samples out, letting people try the drink for the first time. And we also visit people in their offices, drop cold cans off, and just try and create a general buzz using techniques that are low cost. So you won't see us with big billboards, uh, at least in the next 12 months. Um, other than that, we try and uh, test different promotion strategies. So last summer we tested a, a two for one pound offer on uh, the product in store, so you could buy a can of each flavour. We're playing around with things like that just to see what works, see what learn, uh, see what we can learn from, and and just go from there. But the best te tactics for us have been social media and just getting the product in people's hands to to create buzz about the brand. Uh, so launching a drinks company is a relatively challenging thing to do. The, the minimum runs in the factory are relatively large, which has a, has a large cost associated with it. I wouldn't necessarily say it's the most expensive business to start. Um, it's cheaper than building a car or space rocket, um, but it does have a significant capital uh, outlay when you initially start. So it is something we had to raise money pre-starting the business. Um, but I'd reckon, I think you can start this business, or food and drink business, in a much more lean fashion if you need to as well, starting with market stalls and things like that. But yeah, it was relatively expensive to start the, start the business and get it off the ground. So one of the challenges of being a small business is that we don't get too much data and the data is relatively expensive. But we do, through things like social media, we're able to see uh, people talking about the product online, people we've seen before picking it up. And we also do get some data from some of the smaller stores, which suggests that sales are growing in the right direction. Um, hopefully in time, within the next 12 to 18 months, we're able to access a lot more information and find out a lot more about our consumers' habits and why people are picking up the drink. But right now, a lot of it is anecdotal, getting a feel. We're very close to the consumer ourselves as a business, which helps, um, which may be a disadvantage for big businesses. So we do have a good feel for how things are performing, but we're, we're hopefully moving in the right direction. I think there are so many critical success factors for a, for a beverage business. Um, just to name a few, uh, the first would be people. Uh, in order to expand our footprint, we're going to need to have the best team in the business. Um, we're going to have to have energetic, passionate people who spread the word about what we're doing every day. And so that's something we're trying to build. We're going to need to continue innovating the product, making sure it tastes great, making sure the packaging appeals to consumers, really listening to consumers as we grow and not getting too set in our ways. I think probably the, the third and fourth things would be capital and ensuring that we have the funds required for growth kind of in the horizon locked in and, and that allows us to, to move forwards that way. And the fourth thing is just operational efficiency and making sure that we're able to continue to get product to stores. Um, obviously we've hopefully sold into those as we grow as well. Um, but making sure that runs efficiently, uh, cost effectively and smoothly is important to us.